الآن مع برنامج البرنامج مع باسم يوسف That is the opening for a show that's seen in Egypt by an audience almost as big as Canada's entire population. And it's not just a program, it's actually called The Program. And in Egypt's tense political climate, there's always plenty of material for the man they call the John Stewart of Egypt. Here's Nella Ayed. Hello. <laughs> The first ever embrace between the leaders of Iran and Egypt raised a lot of eyebrows. But only one show in the Middle East dared put it to a love song. Al Bernamig simply means the program. Host Bassem Youssef, loved by millions, is behind the new post revolution political talk show, unthinkable here just two years ago. Now he's more popular than any politician. I'm, I'm, I'm an average guy watching uh, the news. I'm just like trying to put it in my perspective. Uh, the fact that you are in comedy uh, makes you a little bit more, more likable. But put me in politics for seven days and people will hate me as much as the other people. Yusuf's anything but average. His funny story retold in the short cartoon that starts every show. He was a heart surgeon before falling into political satire, first for fun in a YouTube show, then in prime time when a local network noticed him and made an offer. Now he has 30 million viewers. This is my office, and again... And a private backstage world he only occasionally shares with visitors. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, yes. Last week, did you have Catherine Zeta-Jones here? Catherine Zeta-Jones was in your seat, sir. In this seat? Your very wow. seat. His main inspiration, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, who once invited him on. The obvious influence has earned him the title of the Jon Stewart of Egypt. I might be a little bit of a, of a Jon Stewart fanatic, but he said, like, where are the people who sit in the back of the bus and throwing spitballs on everybody? Those spitballs can target anyone, though he's seen as a champion of the secular and accused of saving his most biting barbs for Islamists. One of his favorites, President Mohamed Morsi. Could, could we one day see Morsi in that chair? It is my dream. As it is my dream actually to have him. Some, some, some people get, get uh, sarcasm in a, in, in, a, in a bad way. I think it's about like uh, putting your opponent like under the ground, just like burying them alive and just like, yeah, you killed him. It's like, I really don't want that. Actually, I'll be only successful if I get people who are criticized and I make fun uh, of in the chair because that, that is success. For the moment, Yusuf makes fun from afar. Drunk. <laughs> of the president's English. What? And of his more animated speeches. <laughs> and, and the finger wagging. Oh, the finger wagging. Uh, we, we, in Egypt, we have, uh, we have a lot of history with finger wagging. We have uh, a lot of people that came and actually wagged their fingers in our faces. So uh, in Egypt, that's kind of like uh, second to the middle, showing the middle finger. His takedowns bring trouble, investigations and several lawsuits. One claiming Yusuf insulted the president by doing this. Raising questions about how far Egypt's freedom of expression has really come. Have you changed your behavior at all since the complaint? Complaints, I should say. You, you, these things actually shouldn't hold you back. As a matter of fact, I actually I don't even get like my stuff reviewed anymore. <laughs> so um, and uh, by who you mean by? Oh, we have legal advisors. So you don't do that anymore. I give them, but I don't take their advice, <laughs> and they hate me. But this is what exactly what people want us to do: is to back down. Do you get friendly advice like that from powerful voices sometimes? I think powerful voices don't want to talk to me. Or maybe they're actually watching the show and laughing. I mean, maybe Morsi himself is watching the show and actually having fun. Who knows? I mean, I, I, I think the guy has a sense of humor somewhere in him. With the help of a young team, Yusuf says what many may only think. But the unpredictability of Egypt sometimes even leaves him speechless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretend that, uh, as if you're walking, which is uh, something that you never do. It's very hard actually to find uh, humor and, um, and fun stuff. 
amongst all of this pain and, and bloodshed. His fans are glad to have his critical eye on Egypt's turmoil. It's near impossible to get a ticket to his show. It's very popular and it's very successful. It's, it's very obvious that it is. Every Friday I make myself free from everything in his time and go, go to a cafe or I stay at home to watch him. <laughs> exactly. Even those he describes as his thin-skinned detractors can't help but keep an eye on his words. They know exactly what I've said in the episode and they comment on every, everything that I said. It's, it's quite weird. There is a lot of pressure. Each show is filmed with a live audience two days before it airs. And come Friday, people expect timely wit and wisdom. We can't just uh, offer empty comedy. Yes, we offer context and we offer the message. But that's about it. So we're maybe throwing spitballs with a straight face. The revolution that made him a star has been messy, but has also brought badly needed change, he says. It had to happen. We need to lift the lid out of whatever was lurking down there. And we need to let everybody out. I need everybody to speak out. And just like in Egypt, in Dr. Youssef's own gutsy revolution, he says, there's also no going back. Nala Ayed, CBC News, Cairo.